Many skeptics, and especially Jesus mythers, say that Jesus was a copy of the Egyptian god Osiris. If you know Jesus' story, you'll start to see some similarities. Osiris was announced by three wise men at his birth, which are three stars in Orion's belt that point to Osiris' star in the east, Sirius. He was called God of the Vine. He was called King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Resurrection and the Life. He was called the Good Shepherd in a psalm that the Bible plagiarized in Psalm 23. The Lord's Prayer was copied from a prayer to Osiris which begins, O Amen, O Amen, who art in heaven. He was eaten in a ritual-like communion. He was killed and resurrected from the dead, and his death served as hope for all humanity. Given that the Jews spent a long portion of their history in Egypt, and Jesus apparently spent a period of his childhood in Egypt, this doesn't look very good for the case of Jesus. This is a big problem for Christians. Or it would be a problem for Christians if any of it was true. The literature surrounding Osiris never mentions any wise men. The birth narrative says, Hail, Osiris King, stand, raise thyself up. Thy mother Newt has given birth to thee. Geb has purified thy mouth for thee. There is also no reason to assume Jesus' story is linked to the astrological parts of Osiris' story, since the Jesus story never mentions Orion's belt or Sirius. Osiris was said to be Orion, which of course is never said of Jesus. It should be noted, however, that even if Osiris was attended by three wise men at his birth, this wouldn't matter. Jesus was never actually said to be attended by three wise men either. Matthew 2 gives the account. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. The Magi are simply described as giving three gifts. There is no explicit indication of exactly three men. Neither Jesus nor Osiris are ever called God of the vine. Jesus says in John 15:5, I am the vine and you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. But of course he isn't called the God of the vine, or of wine for that matter. There is no evidence of Osiris being called King of Kings or Lord of Lords. He is called God above gods, but this is too general of a title to have any significant connection. There is no evidence of Osiris ever being called the Resurrection or the Life. There is no evidence of Osiris being called the Good Shepherd in a pre-Christian psalm. This is just an assertion in Barbara Walker's The Woman's Encyclopedia of Myths and Secrets, and she does not provide a source. I can find no existence of any prayer to Osiris that resembles the Lord's Prayer. I can, however, demonstrate that this is a total fabrication. There seems to be a long series of citations that unintentionally buries the lead. D. M. Murdoch, also known as Akaria S., mentions this prayer in her book. The Lord's Prayer was prefigured by an Egyptian hymn to Osiris Amen beginning, O Amen, O Amen, who are in heaven. Amen was also invoked at the end of every prayer. Murdoch cites Barbara G. Walker's book, The Woman's Encyclopedia of Myths and Secrets, which in turn cites Egyptian Magic by E. A. Wallace Budge. This is where the prayer line seems to originate. Budge claims this line of the poem comes from chapter 162 of the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which he translated. His translation references another translation by Renaud and Naval which contains the full text of the chapter. Take a second and read this for yourself. Nothing here resembles that prayer. The closest thing is a recitation which reads, O Amon of Amons, thou who art in the sky. The burden of proof is on the Jesus mythers to show the link between this specific recitation and the Lord's Prayer. I have no reason to think they can produce evidence. E. Naville writes, Chapters 162 through 165 are of a very late date. They are of a different character from the other chapters of the Book of the Dead. They belong rather to the magic books of the old Egyptians. When they were written, there was a decay in the religion, which drifted more and more into magic, for which the Egyptians were famous under the Roman Empire. Lastly, the word Amen is not an invocation when used in the Christian sense. Amen just means surely or truly. 
there is no evidence of Osiris being eaten in a ritual-like communion. This is another claim from Barbara Walker that is asserted without citation. Though Osiris was killed, he was not resurrected in the Christian sense. From the Encyclopedia of Religion, Jonathan Z. Smith says, Osiris was murdered and his body dismembered and scattered. The pieces of his body were recovered and rejoined, and the god was rejuvenated. However, he did not return to his former mode of existence, but rather journeyed to the underworld, where he became the powerful lord of the dead. In no sense can Osiris be said to have risen in the sense required by the dying and rising pattern. Most certainly, it was never conceived of as an annual event. The repeated formula, rise up, you have not died, whether applied to Osiris or a citizen of Egypt, signaled a new, permanent life in the realm of the dead. This means that Osiris' resurrection is not a precursor to Jesus' resurrection, since they are different in their results. Osiris was considered to be the mythical prototype for the distinctive Egyptian process of mummification. Through these parallels, the individual Egyptian dead became identified with and addressed as Osiris. The myth and ritual of Osiris emphasizes the message that there is life for the dead, although it is of a different character than that of the living. What is to be feared is dying a second time in the realm of the dead. For Christians, resurrection includes a return to bodily existence and a security in the afterlife that cannot be forfeited in a second death. Therefore, Osiris' death cannot be said to be a hope for all humanity like the resurrection of Christ is said to be. After looking at the evidence behind these claims, it's clear that there is no real link between the accounts of Osiris and Jesus. Therefore, it's clear that Jesus is not a copy of Osiris. 